Hello again everybody and continuing uh, with Odysseus and his travels, so more things to do with shipping kind of today. One of the most famous and imitated images from Greek pottery painting, perhaps from all mythology, is a red figure Stamnos from the 5th century BC depicting Odysseus tied to the mast of his ship while his men row onwards oblivious to his cries goes right to the heart of human experience and to the central idea of temptation and the need to resist it. And it's also, that idea is also often found elsewhere in other uh, traditions, other cultural traditions, not least in the Bible. So, what actually happened with Odysseus? Well, at the beginning of Book 12 of the Odyssey, he's told by Circe, uh, the witch on whose island he's been uh, for more than a year, that he will face difficulties and hardships after leaving her. And she tells him that the first of these will be the Sirens. Odysseus has to decide whether to tell his men, and on this, on this occasion he actually does. And this is what happened. I was much perturbed in spirit and before long took my men into my confidence. My friends, I said, it's not right that only one or two of us should know the prophecies that Circe in her divine wisdom has made to me, and I am going to pass them on to you, so that we may all be forewarned, whether we die or escape the worst and save our lives. Her first warning concerned the mysterious sirens. We must beware of their song and give their flowery meadow a wide berth. I alone, she suggested, might listen to their voices, but you must bind me hard and fast so that I cannot stir from the spot where you will stand me, by the step of the mast with the rope's ends lashed round the mast itself. And if I beg you to release me, you must tighten and add to my bonds. I thus explained every detail to my men. In the meantime, our good ship, with that perfect wind to drive her, fast approached the siren's isle. But now the breeze dropped, some power lulled the waves, and a breathless calm set in. Rising from their seats, my men drew in the sail and threw it into the hold, then sat down at the oars and churned the water white with their blades of polished pine. Meanwhile, I took a large round of wax, cut it up small with my sword, and kneaded the pieces with all the strength of my fingers. The wax soon yielded to my vigorous treatment and grew warm, for I had the rays of my lord the sun to help me. I took each of my men in turn and plugged their ears with it. They then made me a prisoner on my ship by binding me hand and foot, standing me by the step of the mast and tying the rope's end to the mast itself. This done, they sat down once more and struck the grey water with their oars. We made good progress and had just come within call of the shore when the sirens became aware that a ship was swiftly bearing down upon them and broke into their liquid song. Draw near, they sang. Illustrious Odysseus, flower of Achaean chivalry, and bring your ship to rest so that you may hear our voices. No seaman ever sailed his black ship past this spot without listening to the sweet tones that flow from our lips, and none that listened has not been delighted and gone on a wiser man. For we know all that the Argives and Trojans suffered in the broad plain of Troy by the will of the gods, and we have foreknowledge of all that's going to happen on this fruitful earth. The lovely voices came to me across the water, and my heart was filled with such a longing to listen that with nod and frown I signed to my men to set me free. But they swung forward to their oars and rowed ahead, while Perimedes and Eurylochus jumped up, tightened my bonds and added more. However, when they rowed past the sirens and we could no longer hear their voices and the burden of their song, my good companions were quick to, to clear their ears of the wax I'd used to stop them and so free me from my shackles. Well, Homer doesn't tell us exactly how his men knew that they'd got past the sirens, uh, but anyway, they did. Um, it's quite interesting, incidentally, thinking about the artwork that goes with this, uh, that Homer says the great temptation came not from the appearance of the sirens, uh, but from the beauty of their song. Uh, and uh, later artists uh, have focused uh, more on the appearance of the sirens uh, and their uh, allure than it does on the song of the sirens. So what should Odysseus have done? Plugged his own ears as well as his men's? Acted as he did? Not told his men at all? 
When he failed to tell his men about uh, Aeolus having given him a bag of winds, they suspected he was hiding gold from them. And when he was asleep, released uh, the uh, fastenings on the bag and rather than finding gold in there, they got winds and that blew him away from returning to Ithaca. He, did, uh, he didn't tell his men about Scylla and Charybdis, wisely however, uh, so he lost some men but not all of them, so this can go either way. With the sirens he uses his, his men to be the, so that he can be the first to hear the sirens and not die. But because he planned things well, he survives. So, what's this say for us? When faced with temptation, we are human and we are weak and we shall continue to be so. You show me chocolate cake and I'll show you weakness. But we all need to take Circe's advice and plan ahead and know that we shall face temptation and fortify ourselves in advance against that. Then we shall survive as Odysseus did.